Oh, come now, Lord, come now, Lord. Like never before, we desire you, Lord. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Give him all his praise. Come on, lift your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you may be seated. Welcome, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome to the house of the Lord. It's good to see everybody. I just wanted to go over a few announcements. Um, not too many going on. Just wanted to remind everybody, New Year's Eve service this Tuesday at... 10 o'clock. We're going to pray in the new year. We've been doing this for years, but there's nothing like it praying in the new year, starting your new year with, with just first fruits with the Lord. You know, so if you have time and, you know, come by, join us at 10 o'clock for New Year's Eve service. I know Pastor Gus will have a word for the new year, as well as we'll have praise and worship, and we'll have testimonies as well. So please make it. If you haven't been to a New Year's Eve service, it's pretty unique, and it's pretty awesome. So how many are coming to New Year's Eve? Woo! we got a full crowd. Awesome. So 10 o'clock this Tuesday. And then just also want to let you know, because of the, hol the Christmas and New Year's schedule, we will not have life groups this Wednesday. So no life groups this Wednesday because it's New Year's Day. And um, so we're not doing it, but we'll come back the following Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And we're studying... Um, um, Robert Morris, and he's awesome. His teaching has been amazing. So if you haven't made it, um, you could still have the opportunity to come Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. And then also every Monday night we have prayer. How many have been to prayer on a Monday night? Hallelujah. It's pretty awesome. Um, even if you, you know, can come by for 10, 15 minutes, or even if you could stay for the full hour, it's powerful to come together in unity and pray for our nation, pray for our families, pray for our church and the, and the vision and the future of this church. And um, it's pretty awesome. So if you come this Monday, 7 o'clock, that one we're not canceling. It will be, we will be here Monday at 7 o'clock. And I think that's basically all the announcements we have today um today we're going to take the offering up here at the front so as the worship team sings um as they get started we'll come up here and take the offering okay amen praise god let's um, have somebody pray for the offering actually ira will you pray please god we are so fortunate lord we thank you for your grace we thank you lord god for your amazing grace lord god Thank you for your mercy in our lives, Lord God, and your favor. Lord, we look to you, Lord God, right now as we go from this year into the next one. God, guide our hearts, Lord, back to you. Lord, let our thoughts and our hearts be moved, Lord God, by what you want. And we, uh, we pray right now, Lord God, bless this offering. Let it meet the needs, Father God. And we also pray, Lord God, touch Papa Frank and raise him up, Father God. We just give you all praise, honor, and glory as we expect you to answer all of these prayers in the name of Jesus. Actually, one more thing, too. Um, for New Year's Eve service, we're also bringing God our first by praying in the new year. But pray about what God has in mind for you to give him your first fruits in, in your tithes and offering as well so we could start the year strong in Jesus' name. Okay? So as, as the worship team starts singing, we'll start taking the offering up here at the front.
Hallelujah. 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 Before we uh before we sit down, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ask the worship team one more time. One more time. We're gonna sing that one more time. You know what? Tonight's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be a little different. Tonight's gonna be prayer and worship. We'll get into a little bit of the word. But we need to pray, church. We need to pray, church. We need to pray, church. We need to intercede, church. But in the midst of the prayer, we're going to worship him. Okay? We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen? So as the worship team sings this one more time, forget about the person next to you. Forget about your situation. Forget about your circumstance for a little bit. And lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. The word of the Worship. Beginning.
shout of praise, church. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Yes, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If God has done anything in your life, give him a shout of praise tonight, church. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Well, just right quick, we're just going to get into the word just for a few minutes. We're going to get back to worship here real soon. Worship and prayer. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit different tonight. want to welcome everybody tonight amen saturday night service fire and water hallelujah praise god you know it's so true it's so so true and it may sound like just simple words but it's so true when you are in a place of victory you cannot be in a place of defeat amen you know when you are in a place of victory it's impossible in a place of victory it's impossible to be in a place of defeat amen we have the victory, amen? amen? Through Jesus, amen? amen? We are in a place of victory, amen? amen? So we're not looking for victory. We have the victory, amen? Hallelujah! Praise God, yes. Right quick, if you turn your Bibles to the book of Philippians chapter 4. Just want to, real quick, just chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. You know, we, at the beginning of this year, actually it was the first Monday of February, um, we had been asking, prior to the first Monday of February, we had been asking Pastor Gus, and we had been talking to him about getting together on, on uh, having a prayer night, you know, and, um, and the time wasn't right, the time wasn't right, and then the first Monday of February, he said, we're starting, we're starting uh, prayer night amen and praise be to God because it is one of our biggest weapons as believers church I'm telling you it is one of our biggest weapons as believers is prayer it, it, it if, if, if you if you only pray on church nights you're starving yourself if you only pray when you come to church you're starving yourself, church. If you don't have your secret closet at home, you're starving yourself. And you're depriving yourself of what God has for you. Trust me. We started, we started uh, the first Monday of February. And from that point on until now, there's been mountaintops. And there's been valleys. There's been victories and there's been battles. There's been wars. There's been sleepless nights. There's been nights of anxiety. There's been worry. There's been, there's been, there's been a fight. Amen. But praise be to God that we, we are more than overcomers through him who loves us. Amen more than overcomers ours is the victory ours is the victory don't matter what you're going through you may tell me you don't understand or you don't know but you're looking at an ex-junkie ex-crackhead ex-thief ex i mean everything you can put there you are looking at that person and god took that person and turned his life around somebody was praying for me Somebody was praying for me. My mother, my grandmother, sleepless nights. They were in battles. At, there was nights when I would get home from running the street, finding my mom on a couch, and I would ask her, what are you doing? 
I'm waiting for you to get home. Mom, I haven't been home in four days. I've been waiting for you four days on this couch. So if you're telling me that I don't understand, maybe I don't understand just that much. Because I tell you, I do understand. I do understand. Real quick. Real quick, and I'll get right back into the word. October of 2009. So, you know, you, you may tell me I don't understand. I found myself in, a, in, a, in an ugly situation. Ugly situation. Not only, not only are you looking at, like I said, X, all those things that I said, but you're looking at a man that in October of 2009, I pointed my gun at a cop. And the majority of stories like that don't get to be told afterwards. I'm, I'm just telling you, those stories don't really get to be shared, but on the news with the white sheet over somebody. Most of the time, it's that person, me. But God had different. God had a different plan. God had a different story written for me already. So for you to tell me that I don't understand, maybe you don't understand. Maybe you don't get it. Because I can tell you a little bit of my story, but more than anything, I just want to share with you what's been going on this year through prayer. Like I said, since we started Monday nights, we've seen mountaintops and we've seen valleys. We've seen miracles. We've seen God multiply food. I have a witness. My wife was there when the bags of food didn't run out at that orphanage in Mexico. Amen. Literally, the bags of food did not run out. We had to start giving out two bags of food to give it away all of a sudden. What we thought wasn't going to be enough, God multiplied. And amen. Amen. And then there's been times where we found ourselves worried about our children, not knowing where they're at in the middle of the night. We found ourselves crying, holding hands, my wife and I, for our, praying for our kids, finding ourselves by ourselves, thinking, man, Lord, we don't know where they're at. We don't know what they're doing, but you know where they're at. You know what they're doing, and all we can do is pray is pray, Lord, and we're going to stick to what the Word of God says. And at the first, when we started these prayer services, in Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, was the verse that we would put up. But tonight, I want to share something that God put into my heart at the very beginning, as we started these prayer services on Monday night. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. You can let me know by saying amen. amen. If you don't have it, we got it up on the screens. Amen. The word of God says, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing. In another version it says, be anxious for nothing. In another version it says, don't worry about nothing. In another version it says, God's got your back in everything. So you can, you can read whatever version you want. It all means the same. Don't worry about anything. Amen. God's got your back. I, I'm, I'm not ashamed. I'll, I'll say it. I'm 50 years old. I'm old. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> um, I'm old school. You know what I mean? So I, the version I read may be a little different than yours, okay? But it means the same. All right, I'll break it down so we can all understand. God's got our back tonight, amen? Okay, God's got our back tonight. Don't worry about nothing, okay? It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, in everything, church, 
in everything by prayer and supplication. And this is the key to your prayers being answered. It says in everything with thanksgiving. You thank them when you're down. You thank them when you're up. You thank them when you're happy. You thank them when you're sad. You thank them when there's not enough. You thank them when there's enough. Just have a heart of thanksgiving. Amen. And then you'll be like the duck. The water just roll off right off your back. Whatever the enemy throws your way, man, thank you, Father. Because your word says that all things work together for good. As Pastor Gus says, the good, the bad, and the ugly. All things work together for good. All things. He says, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And then, here's, here's the part that is not only are we, like, like I was saying earlier, if you only pray when you come to church, you're depriving and you're starving yourself. This is the part that you're missing out on. This is the part that God wants to relay to you tonight. Verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When you pray, when you take time out to spend with the one who said, Peace, be still. And the winds and the storms and the thunder and the lightning, everything calmed down. When you get to talk to him, you get to experience peace that, that you can't experience anywhere else. You can't get it anywhere else. You, you, you can't sit there and tell me I've experienced peace here, there, and everywhere. You have not experienced because the Bible says he is the prince of peace. He's the one that calms the storm. He's the one that turns the turmoil into tranquility. He turns the storms into a peaceful time. Our anxiousness and our worrisome, all that does, it just, it just, it, it just, it, it burdens us. It puts a weight on our shoulders. We walk around kicking rocks, worried when, who, what, when, and where. How is this going to work out? And, 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 and trust me, church, I'm not saying it like, like if I never worry. I'm just telling you what I've experienced in my prayer time. I'm telling you what I've experienced through my time with God. And as I was telling a brother earlier, you know, there's the, one of my biggest, one of my biggest repeated prayers between me and God, I ask God, Lord, keep me humble. Keep me humble and let me be transparent to those that hear me. Those that see me in church may not see me out on the street and say, isn't that the pastor? What is he doing? Oh, my God. Isn't that Brother Tony? He's doing what? Oh. And they run right to Facebook. Bam. You know, oh, my God. Brother Tony was doing this, that, and a third. Yeah, oh, my God. Oh, man, you should have seen Brother Tony. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? Brother Tony's all over, you know, Snapchat, Instagram, all them things. You know what I mean? But I, I asked God, I said, Lord, help me be transparent. Help let people be able to see right through me. Let me hold nothing back. That when people hear me or see me at church and they see me at a store or at a restaurant, it may be the same person. Because when you only pray here at church, that's what we get. We get two faces. When you only pray at church, 
you can't be that same person at home because at church we gotta we gotta act the part we gotta play the part i gotta i have to preach right i have to sing right i have to dress right i have to look right you know i have to i have to make sure i better talk right you know what i mean i better use the right language you know what i mean because it, you know i'm in church but if i don't take time out to pray at home if i don't take time out and, and you know what and and i and i'm going to step out on a limb way out there if you get a chance be here on monday nights be here on monday nights prayer amongst community that's powerful if you read in the book of Acts, they constantly did it. They prayed when they were in jail. They prayed when they were out of jail. They prayed before they took their missionary trips. They prayed when they came back from missionary trips. They prayed before they broke bread. They were constantly praying. And if there's ever a generation, if there's ever a generation that needs prayer, it's now. It is now. It is time to pray, church. It is time to pray. You know, we're living in the day and age where and when I say this word, I'm talking general, okay? I'm not talking about everybody here. When I say everybody, I mean the body of Christ, generally. Everybody wants head knowledge. We all want to know. We all want this knowledge. Oh, my God. I just, I just need to know. I need to know this, that, and the third. I need to read this book. And, and, and don't take, please, don't misunderstand me. I love reading. I may fall asleep while I read, but I love reading. Amen. But everybody wants head knowledge. Trying to figure it out. How do I do it? Self-help this. Self-help that. How do I go here? How do I, get, how do I get blessed? How do I talk right? How do I dress right? How do I, how do I find a girlfriend? How do I find a boyfriend? Who do I date? When do I date? When do I stop dating? When do I begin dating? Everybody wants head knowledge. And they run to teachers as if the teachers, and they may have a little bit of the answer, but there's one teacher that I know has all the answers, has the ultimate answer. I know there's a teacher that can teach you that will give you more than you can handle. And the Apostle Paul was letting people know here, be careful for nothing. Because if there's, if there's, it's, it's that time, church. It, I'm talking amongst the church. You know, people speaking, and, and I truly believe this, but I'm not going to speak on it tonight. I believe Jesus is coming back. You know, I believe he's at the actual threshold of the door. You know, be ready. Be ready, church. Be ready. Make sure your lamps are full of oil. Okay? Be ready. I'll leave it at that. But people are anxious. People are nervous. People are worried. People are trying to figure out dates. People are trying to figure out what's going to happen tomorrow. Oh, my God, the economy. Oh, my God, this, this, this politician. Oh, my God, this pastor says this. This pastor says that. Oh, my God, did you see the news? Oh, my God, did you see what's going on? Man, oh, God, so it's just so much. And, and we're worrying ourselves down. We're worrying ourselves down to even almost sometimes getting sick. We worry so much. We got to take this medicine. We got to take that medicine. Because we worry so much, and then the medicine for worrying gets us something else. Then before you know it, we're just all worried up, all full of anxiety. 
Man, I need something to put me to sleep. I need something to pick me up. I need something to keep me just steady. I need something to help me keep going. And we're worrying ourselves. And the Apostle Paul tells us, be anxious, be careful for nothing. For nothing. For nothing. Be careful for nothing. There's nothing out there that should take the place of the Prince of Peace. Earlier this year, and I'll just real quick, and I'm going to finish. We, uh, our, our two youngest daughters, um, living at home, you know, we thought, my wife and I thought, man, we're, we're, we thought we were doing a good job raising our girls, you know what I mean? We thought we were raising them the way we should raise them. And earlier this year, they came and they told us, uh, we don't want to live here no more. Well, you know, one's 18, one's 19. I mean, that's not old, you know what I mean? You still want your kids at home at that age, you know what I mean? But they told us, we don't want to live here no more. As a matter of fact, the 18-year-old told my wife, kind of like told her to her face almost. She says, I'm tired of living under your rules. Man, and, and to hear, I, I, if it would have been my son, I'd have been all right. Get on, boy. Hurry up. You know what I mean? I mean, boys, boys are a little different. You know what I mean? But girls, you just like, wait, wait, don't hold on, don't go yet. Hold on, kick back here at the house still. You know, hold on, don't don't leave. You know, and and it was hard. It was hard. It was tough. You know, because we thought, man, we we kind of blamed ourselves a little bit. Like, what do we did? What do we do wrong? Where do we fail these kids? Why do they want to? I mean, we're giving them everything they need. We're helping them out. We're trying to raise them right. Where, what, what happened? What happened? You know, and, and we were just worried. Flat out worried. And God just started impressing on my heart more and more. The more the enemy would bring that thought to my mind of what can happen out there, the more God pressed that word into my heart. Don't worry. Be anxious for nothing. And then all of a sudden, it turned from that to, man, it's going to be all right. It's going to be good. All right. It's going to be okay. And, then, and, and then, then before you know it, the girls started coming back around like, man, we miss home. All right, all right, cool, you know. But, you know, but they still didn't want to move in. But, but then they started coming back like, man, we miss being at home, Mom. Yeah, Dad, yeah. How you know what I mean? I'm like, all right, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. That very next verse that says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall, hard your, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I looked. And that phrase shall keep. Because I wondered, as time started going by, I was like, why is it that I'm not worrying about my girls no more? Right? Why is it that I'm really feeling like everything is going to be all right? Why should I have to worry? Right? Come to find out that that phrase means to be guarded by a military guard okay so in other words when you pray somebody is guarding your heart with a military guard must I tell you who that somebody is must I tell you who's guarding your heart when you feel peace when you know there shouldn't be no peace because I started thinking Everything's going to be all right. Everything is going to be fine. That same 18-year-old daughter that told us, basically, 
we don't want to live under your rules no more. Where she's at right now, when she writes my wife, she writes her every week, every two weeks. She tells my wife, Mom, all I do where I'm at, all I do is pray here. She says, I can't wait to be on church on Sundays. All I do is pray. I'm praying for you guys. I pray for me. I'm praying all the time. I tell my wife, see, somebody guarded, amen. Somebody did their job, hallelujah. And it's got nothing to do with us. It's got everything to do with him. So when we think, oh, you're not having an effect, or you're not doing something right, you're not doing this or that, or you're not making, you know, effect on somebody, trust me, church, when you pray and you don't worry, somebody's guarding it. Somebody's got a military around your heart, around your mind. And not only that, and I'll finish with this. Another word that that means is impervious, which means it's impenetrable. When you pray and the peace of God is guarding your heart, nothing can get in. Nothing can get in. It's impenetrable. That army that's around, that guard that's protecting you, it's impenetrable. It doesn't matter what the enemy does. It doesn't matter what the enemy says. It cannot get in. It cannot get in, church. It doesn't matter what the enemy's trying to do. Church, this year, as uh, I was kind of doing a little bit of reading today. Forget about your New Year's resolutions, all right? Because we're going to break them at 1215. You know what I mean? We make them at 1159. By 1215, they're already broken. So for, forget about your New Year's resolutions, all right? How about this year? We make some end-of-the-year determinations. Determine. Determine purpose in your heart that you're going to pray more, that you're going to spend more time, that, 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 when, that, when, that when something's not going right, before you run to this, that, and a third, this person, that person, you know, uh, your phone, uh, um, this social site, this, you know, you know, before you do any of that, I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking it. But there's somebody else who's waiting for your call. There's somebody else who's waiting for you to knock at their door. There's somebody else waiting for you to say their name. And that person has no rival. That person has no equal. That's the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. That person is waiting. That person is waiting for you to come to them because the peace that you're looking for, he has it in his hands. Church, as we get ready tonight, we're not going to sing this song, but I just kind of, I don't know why it came to mind right now. You know, remember when we were kids in Sunday school, you know, you, we will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. We will enter his courts with praise. I, I, it just, I don't know why it just came to mind. I'm sorry. I just had, you know what I mean? Just had, just thought about something. But, but tonight, tonight, we're going to worship. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back up. And we're going to pray. We're going to intercede. And we're going to come into agreement.
we won't get into, you know, but we're going to pray for Papa Frank tonight. We're all going to stand in agreement. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray for Pastor Gus tonight. We're praying for healing and we're praying for peace. Amen. Amen. As we get ready to worship, as we get ready to lift up the name of Jesus, I truly believe, I truly believe that it wasn't by accident or a coincidence or um, luck. You know, there's no more of that in the kingdom of God. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a beginning. Everything has an end. There's a purpose for everything. And I believe the first Monday of February of 2019 had its purpose. Was the beginning of what God is about to do and he's beginning to do in the church. God is moving, church, in this place. And at the beginning of the year, there was a word spoken. That it was the year of miracles. I... Last time I checked, it's still 2019. I know we got a couple more days, but your miracle is in the house tonight. Amen. Your miracle. God just wants you to come to him. He won't force you. God is such a gentleman. He won't force you. He won't pull you by the hair. He won't pull you by your hand. He won't drag you. Man, he is such a gentleman. I heard one time this, this preacher said, that sometimes we need to be pulled by our hair. I kind of looked at him, you know, and like, man, you have a hard time getting hold of me then, you know what I mean? You know? So, your miracles in the house tonight church as we get ready to pray we're going to come into agreement for healing and for peace for the man of the house and the spiritual father of this house we're going to come in an agreement Pastor Gus and Papa Frank. Amen. The altar is open. I'm going to ask. Let's come up and let's intercede for a few minutes. Let's pray for a while. It's okay. We'll put ourselves aside for a little bit. And let's pray for the, those two men. Amen. Amen. The altar is open, church. Let's pray. Let's worship.
church. Let's all come together. Let's pray right now. We're going to pray for Pastor Gus. Come on, church. Lift up your voice. Intercede for him. Let's pray for Pastor Gus right now. Let's pray for peace. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Pray for peace right now in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father, we worship you. We thank you. We thank you right now for our pastor. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you and glorify you, my Lord. Father, we pray, my God, that peace that surpasses all understanding. All understanding, my God. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Father, bring peace in the midst of the storm. In the midst of the worry, my God. In the midst of anxiety. Bring peace, Lord. Give them that assurance that everything is going to be okay, my God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we worship you. We praise you. Father, we, oh, we pray, Lord. Oh, we rebuke that spirit of fear, my God. It doesn't come from you. You've not given us a spirit of fear. You've given us a spirit of love, of power, a sound mind, my God. And we declare it in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for peace for that family, my God. Right now, my Lord, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, my Lord. We pray that you, oh, Father, calm the storm, my God. That you calm the waves, my Lord. Oh, that you calm the wind, my Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you, my God. Father, that he come out stronger, more anointed, more on fire for you. All through this storm, my God, in Jesus' name. Oh, we worship and praise you. We exalt thee, O oh God. We glorify you and thank you. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Hallelujah. Bring peace to this place, my Lord. Bring peace to this place, my God. In the name of Jesus. We exalt thee, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Glorify you and thank your holy name. Oh my God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, bless him. Bless him, my God. Bless him, my Lord. Bless him, my Father God. Bless him, my God. Bless him, my Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Strengthen him, my Father. Strengthen him, my God. Oh, Father God, hallelujah. Strength from above, my Lord, hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, glorify you, and thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We exalt you. my God. Okay, church, let's pray. Let's pray for Papa Frank right now. Lift him up in prayer. Hallelujah. Lift him up in prayer. Hallelujah. Healing right now in Jesus' name. Pray for a miracle right now in Jesus' name. Pray for a miracle right now. Let's agree. Let's agree in the name of Jesus. Let's agree in the name of Jesus. Let's agree in the name of Jesus miracle right now hallelujah in Jesus mighty name oh we worship you my God we thank you for him my God hallelujah we come together as a church my God we come together as a church tonight we lift up Papa Frank right now my God we pray for a miracle my God hallelujah father we declare your word my Lord you are the God that heals my God by your stripes we are healed he is healed in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, he is healed. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you and praise you, glorify you, and thank you, my God. You are 
worthy, my Lord. You are worthy, my God. Make a way, my Lord, where there seems to be no way, my God. Make a way where there seems to be no way, my God. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I love you. That the blood of Jesus would just wash away, wash away any infirmity, any sickness, any infection. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. We declare the blood of Jesus upon his body, hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, worship you, worship you, worship and glorify you. Bless you, my God. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, my God. Hallelujah. Father, we rebuke that disease right now. Cast it out, my Lord. And it's in the name of Jesus, my God. In the name of Jesus, remove it, my God. It's not from you, my Lord. Remove it in the name of Jesus. Once again, fill them with your spirit, my God. Hallelujah. Father, right now in Jesus' name. Oh, there is power in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We exalt thee, my God. 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 We exalt thee, Father, with the heart of thanksgiving. We say yes, Lord. Thank you for this miracle, my God. Thank you for what you're doing right now, my God. Thank you for what you're going to do, my Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my God. Hallelujah. 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 my Lord hallelujah 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 father we thank you father we thank you hallelujah father we thank you Your miracle and your turnaround, your breakthrough. It all begins with the relationship with Jesus. It all begins with the relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, right now, and I and I ask you, I ask you. Is there someone here tonight? that would like to know what it, what it is and what it means to really know peace. Because without Jesus, it's counterfeit. Amen. Without Jesus, it's fake. It just got some mask on it. And we mask with whatever we think is giving us peace, we'll put the mask on it. Whatever it is, you know better than I do. But I know for a fact, I know the one that brought peace to my life Hallelujah. is in this house here tonight. Amen? Amen. Your miracle, your breakthrough, your peace begins with Jesus Christ, a relationship with him. If there's someone here tonight that would say, I, man, I'm going, there's a storm, there's a turmoil, there's a, there's, there's a hurricane, there's, I'm, I, I'm anxious, I'm worrying, I, I don't know what to do, I, this, this situation is just taking control and and I'm, I'm masking it with counterfeit peace. If there's someone here tonight that would say, I want to know that true peace.
It's up to you. And I've said it in the past. It's going to be brought to my remembrance on that day that I had the opportunity to share Jesus. And I'm making sure I share him. It's up to you. Your miracle, your breakthrough, your turnaround begins with the relationship with him. If there's someone here tonight that would say, I want that. I need that. I'm going through a storm. I have no peace. Just lift up your hands here tonight. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Hallelujah. Thank you. Encourage them, church. Encourage them. Encourage them. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 For those that lifted up your hands, trust me. Trust me. Man, don't be ashamed. I'm going to ask you just one more thing. Just, I'd like to pray with you personally. Man, if you just come up to the front, stand up here in the front, I'd like to pray with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, church. Encourage them. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. With the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Father. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. With the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, my God. There is freedom. Yes, my Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your eyes to heaven. Thank you, my God. Hallelujah. There is freedom. Thank you, my God. Hallelujah. Lift your eyes to heaven. There is freedom.
the beginning so as we all pray together those up here in the front I want to hear you guys loud amen let's pray Heavenly Father I come before you I need a Savior I'm a sinner I'm tired of being tired going in circles with no peace tonight I give you my heart I surrender my life it's all yours in Jesus name I believe I'm saved on my way to heaven my best days are ahead I thank you for saving me dying for me washing me with your blood every sin yesterday's gone today's a new beginning in jesus name hallelujah praise god hallelujah praise god hallelujah church extend your hands to the front let's pray for them extend your hands to the front hallelujah
Aleluia. Church, let's continue. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Amen. We're going to continue praying. Tomorrow morning, we'll be here at 9 o'clock from 9 to 10. We serve breakfast 9 to 10, right? Amen. God, I got to get my, my schedule back in order. From, from 9 to 10, we'll be here tomorrow morning. Let's continue praying. Continue praying for the leadership. Continue praying for our pastors. Amen. We love you guys. God bless you. And we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless.